week eight, moving the chains. College football season is here. Tons of conference play going on. Uh, lots of region matchups. I only saw, I think, it was one or two games this week in the upstate that weren't region matchups. Everything else was. I'm Kevin Thomas here alongside John Epps. Man, do we have a good, some good scores for you. Not to mention the game that we were at, which was awesome. Biggest awesome game in the game. state, Dorman Burns. We've got at least, I think, two or three other overtime games that happened tonight. Just so much big, uh, so much big, and, and so much good action, really, in the upstate and across the whole state of South Carolina uh, this week. So, so letting you guys kind of get a few more people in here watching. I know we've got a couple viewers already. Appreciate you guys. Uh, trying to get going here on Twitter as well. As you guys know, follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Uh, we're moving the change, or just moving change, M O V I N C H A I N S on uh, Twitter. Moving the change here on Facebook. You can follow us now on all, where you get your podcast. You get an audio version on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, whatever you use. We're, we're on YouTube every week now as well. So just be sure to you know really uh, really follow us wherever you wherever you guys get your info. So we really appreciate you tuning in and checking us out tonight and really hope you love uh you love what we're doing and telling all your friends for it too that would be uh certainly certainly helpful so let me get this shared out one more time here and then we'll be good to go let's see let's see did you guys go to any games tonight if you did tell us we'd love, love to hear about it love to hear have some pictures you love hearing me twice talk talk twice <laughs> that's pretty crazy huh um, yes, I guess we'll. John, any, any quick thoughts before I get into the, before I get into the scores here in the Upstate? I, you know, there's a couple. I saw one really big time upset. Um, mm -hmm. Something we haven't seen in ten years happen tonight. That's true. Um, another That's true. big game in four A that didn't go quite as I thought it would, um, and some surprisingly close games for some upstate teams too yeah yeah so i'm gonna hop right into it here uh i'll go live on twitter whenever i get a chance to it's being slow right now but we are live on facebook upstate scores john the game we were at biggest game in the state Dorman 35 burns 33 great ball game there over there nixon field we'll give you a breakdown of that here in a few minutes in overtime one of the overtime games john greenville 38 tr 31 TR was up 14 points in the fourth quarter and lost the lead there to Greenville. Our other game of the week, Daniel 41, Walhalla 27. Great bounce back, uh, bounce back game for Tyler, Tyler Venables. He did play tonight for the Lions. Good, Good. win for those guys. Boiling Springs 30, Hillcrest 20. Wow. Another overtime game here. Malden 35, Spartanburg 32. Big win for the Mavericks wow. over there in Spartanburg. And that was in overtime, you said? Yes, in overtime. Blowout one here. Southside Christian 35, Blacksburg 0. Gaffney, 57, Riverside, 7. Greer, 59, Berea, 0. Woodruff, 26, Emerald, 0. Union County, 56, Mid-Carolina, 21. Broom wins over Southside, 14-13. to 13. Southside missed an extra point at the end of the game. Oh, no. To tie it there. Chesney, 45, Carolina, 14. Christchurch, 17, Landrum, 14. Pendleton, 35, or excuse me, Pendleton, 55, Crescent, 0. Kind of a shocker there, John. It's, yeah, a little bit. Greenwood, 24, easily 13. Eastside 63, Blue Ridge 19, Lawrence 42, Jail Man 14, St. Joe's 55, McCormick 20, BHP 49, Pickens 0, Seneca 62, Powderfield 34, T.L. Hanna bounces back from a couple uh, a loss uh, lost a couple weeks ago, 43 to 20, 14 over Wade Hampton, Liberty 45, West Oak 24. Maybe my surprise of the night right here, John. West Side 37, Woodmont 7. Wow. Shocker there to me. And then Wren blanks Palmetto 52 to nothing. That's all the update scores I've got. If I miss something, let me know. I think I've got all of them. John, give us some statewide scores here while I try to get us up and running on Twitter as well, if you don't mind. Yeah, we'll start here in the low country. Somerville shuts out West Ashley 50 to 0 tonight. Newberry with a big close win up in Clinton. They knock off Clinton 14 to to 13. They actually went for two after a late touchdown to uh, to win their 14-13. Wow. Well, you, they say, well, they say actually go for the win on the road, go for the tie at home. It's true. They went against the rules and it bit them. First Baptist a winner tonight in Columbia. They defeat Heathwood Hall 39-26. to Big win for your boys, PD Academy over 
Ryan Tisdale's Williamsburg Academy. Go Eagles! 50 to 21 tonight. A lot of points. Don't mess with the Eagles. Don't mess with the points. Eagles. And let's see here. Rich Spring Mineta falls to Wagner Sally tonight, 40 to 6. Is Wagner Sally really having a good year uh, <clears throat> there in single A ball? Williston Elko shuts out North 46 to 0. Lamar back on track as they put up 70 on Timmonsville tonight, Kevin. Rarely do you hear, and I can keep saying this, I feel like, this year about Timmonsville. Rarely do you see Timmonsville getting beat this bad. Tonight, Lamar beats them 70-0. to zero. Green Sea Floyds, this is another one you don't typically see. They go to Lakeview, beat Lakeview 42-6. to six, Wow. And you know, Green Sea Floyds continue to have a great had, season themselves. You know, they've had some good, good ball clubs the last couple of years. We just finally went live on Twitter. Hey, guys, over here. Finally got it working. John Wade to the Cavs on Twitter over here, too. Alright. Yeah, so you guys are watching on Facebook or Twitter. Either one, check us out. Moving the Chains. Moving Chains on Twitter. Moving the Chains on Facebook. John, back to your scores. Yeah, big score, big win there for Green Sea yeah. Boulder Lakeview, like so, you said, in 1A. In, in Lakeview, they're the number four team in single A, and Green Sea Floyd's the number two team behind Wagner Sally. So, uh, it would be awesome to see Green Sea Floyd's and Wagner Sally meet up mm -hmm. in Columbia. That would be a pretty good game, it looks like. Mackley over Great Falls tonight, 56 to 7. Ware Shoals over Dixie, 41 to 13. Whitmire, a winner over Calhoun Falls Charter, 51 to 6. Blackville Hilda defeats Estel, 37 to 6. Cross over Bethune Bowman, 36 14. Oceanside, they knock off Philip Simmons tonight, 70 to 0. Lee Central, they defeat North Central tonight, 26-21. Mullins over Hannah Pamplico, 34-8. Saluda defeats Fox Creek, 50-7. C.A. Johnson over Eau Claire, 51-8. East Clarendon defeats King Street, 33-12. Central of Pageland over Chesterfield, 37-14. Johnsonville blows out Carver's Bay, 36-14. Gray Collegiate defeats Calhoun, 58-20. Timberland, they shut out Burke tonight, 42-0. to zero. Batesburg Leesville is a winner on the road tonight. They knock off 96 by a score of 39-14. Now, here is a game that sounded awesome. Okay. It, uh, in Bamberg, against Bamberg Earhart, Woodland knocks them off 37-36. Wow. Andrews knocks off Latta tonight, 41 to 10. Hate it for the Vikings. Uh, thoughts and prayers to Hunter Allen on that one. Tough loss there. Andrew Jackson all over Louisville, 51 to 18. Will Branch with the shutout of Allendale Fairfax, 22 to 0. A uh, big win here. This typically is a huge, huge game in. Um, two A ball, but Abbeville tonight all over Silver Bluff, forty eight to seven. That seven. Abbeville team just keeps on. You know, Silver Bluff's a good football team too. I think they're top ten in two A. Abbeville is program. just they're a different level than everybody else in two A right now. Yeah, I think we think that maybe Barn, maybe, maybe Barnwell can play with them, maybe, but they got blown out last year in the championship game, so who really knows? But Abbeville is just a machine there in two A football right now. Uh, Wade Hampton uh, down in the lower state, mm -hmm. they knock off Lake Marion tonight, forty seven to fourteen. And Powersville continues to struggle on the gridiron. Seneca a winner tonight over Powersville, 62-34. to And that is um, the clip of statewide scores that we have currently. We do have some more coming on the way, so we'll go over those in a little yep. bit. Yep. I will, uh, so, John, let's run through the update scores one more time. Then we'll give a quick recap of the game that we were at, that burns Dorman game that everybody wants to hear about, that everybody wanted to be at, that everybody... It was, if you weren't there, you missed out. I mean, really. But outside of and I, I mean, even with state championships, that mm -hmm. was one of the biggest productions I've seen in high school. Yeah, that was we'll, a big deal. We'll get into yeah, it. So yeah. Here in a minute. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. I see Haley out there, uh, Sean, Blake, several others, uh, Dwight checking in. Thank you guys for watching. That's right, Sean. We are TR. Tough loss for those guys. Uh, they've got a good program this year. Good, good. Uh, it's get, still a good game. Still a yeah, good game. You, you, can't, you, hate blow, you that. can't blow a 14-point lead you hate that. to the team you're trying to knock off in, in your in your region. But good good uh good game there between those two teams. Uh back to the upstate scores here. The game we were at, Dorman 35, Burns 33. In overtime, like we just said, Greenville 38, TR 31. 
Daniel 41, Walhalla 27, Boiling Springs 30, Hillcrest 20, Malden 35 to 32 over Spartanburg in overtime, Southside Christian 35, Blacksburg 0, Gaffney 57, Riverside 7, Greer 59, Berea 0, Woodruff 26, Emerald 0, Union County 56, Mid Carolina 21, Broome 14, Southside 13, Chesney 45, Carolina 14, Christchurch 17, Landrum 14, Pendleton 55, Crescent 0, Greenwood 24, Easley 13, Eastside 63, Blue Ridge 19, Lawrence 42, GLN 14, St. Joe's 55, McCormick 20, BHP 49, Pickens 0, Seneca 62, Powderfield 34, TL Hannah 43, Wade Hampton 14, Liberty 45, West Oak 24, Westside 37 to 7, winners over Woodmont, and Wren 52, Palmetto 0. Wraps up our week eight upstate high school football scores, John. Let me tell you one more time about the social media here. Follow us on Twitter at Moving Change. It's right under John there. You see M O V I N C H A I N S. Follow us on Facebook, obviously, Moving the Change, like you're watching right now. If you're watching on Facebook, you're watching on Twitter. Thank you guys for doing that as well. You know, on Twitter, we recommend you follow us on both, because really on Twitter, we get more scores throughout the game that we're at. Yeah, more we live updates on Twitter. Yeah, we're still doing, we'll do the games of the week post, do the teams of the week post on both. We go live on both now. But you just get a little bit more up-to-date, uh, real-time stuff on the Twitter page. So feel free to like us and share us on both. Uh, definitely tell all your friends about it. We really appreciate it. This has gotten a lot bigger than we never imagined. Now we're reaching 50,000 people a month on Twitter. I uh, pulled this up. That's awesome. So. Thank you guys for, for helping us out uh, on watching and, and, and sharing and everything. So, John, like I mentioned, biggest game in the state, number two team in 5A Burns. I think the tie for third team in 5A Dorman. Both teams were 7 0 going into tonight. Both teams undefeated in region. This game really put put the winner in the driver's seat in that region. I mean, for sure. I mean, for sure, of who's going to clinch uh, home field, I guess, throughout, or I guess until the upper state final, depending on how the, the brackets work out. But, big game here, John. Dorman wins 35-33. Give us some breakdown. Give us some thoughts, and I'll kind of chime in where I can here as you go through it. Um, yeah, stop me if I go too far here because there, there's a lot to cover. Um, yeah, John's got a notepad full over here. <laughs> yeah. So um, your your friend Zach. Yeah. Um, huge shout out to him and the, yep. the Burns Athletic Department for helping us out, hooking us up tonight, and he advised us get there by six fifteen. At the latest. At the latest. For a 7.30 game. Hour 15, over an hour before kickoff. We got there just after 6. I got one of the last parking spots in the lot we were uh, we were parking in. Mm -hmm. There was a huge line to get in one of the four gates at Nixon Field. And the line continued to grow um, yep. before we walked in. An hour before kickoff. Yeah, um, so we posted a picture actually on Twitter if you followed us. You yeah, some great, we posted. some great pictures, a couple cool videos. Yeah, um, they put the Burns team on a bus. They had the head coach on a Army Humvee on the gun turret, yes. holding an American flag. Yes, as they came around this, to the stadium. You know what's what's nuts about this, John? <laughs> is it wasn't just Burns Dorman big game, huge game for football reasons. It was also a military appreciation night. It was like youth little, night. little Rebels youth night for cheerleaders and, and football team. It was two class reunions, I think, for 84 <laughs> yeah, and 89 yeah, or yeah. something like that. And also there was something else going on too. But that the place was packed out. Like the, You couldn't fit anybody else in there. If you've been to Nixon Field before, you know there's obviously a home side, a wayside. But the, both those were filled up along with all the hills, the grass hills you can sit on. There were a ton of people in there. No those. seats anywhere. So Yeah. Back to yeah, back to you. But yeah, great pre-game production. Um, a lot of fanfare going on. The crowd got there early, mm -hmm. um, and again, you, enormous crowd. I'd love to know what the number is. I have no idea yeah. what Nixon people holds. It's got to be. But, it's uh, got to be. 12, it was over that. 12, 15, 20, 000 maybe. I don't it, know. It, it it's hard to judge that, but it was a lot of people. It was a lot, but it was great. And then uh, the game started off awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, Burns got the opening kick, and they weren't able to do a whole lot on their first drive kick the ball to Dorman, and then after that, the whole first half, Dorman and Burns are just going up and down the field trading mm -hmm. scores. Yep. Great play by both quarterbacks. Yes. I thought both quarterbacks were making good decisions on when to run, when yep. to come out of the pocket, throwing the ball beautifully. Mm -hmm. Dorman's wide receivers did an awesome job on deep balls. It was – it became a pattern in the first half. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, one team – you know, whoever had the ball would get – 
an offensive holding call or we get sacked, and then you knew. Here, All right, play well, here comes the big play. <laughs> yep. um, typically on third and long was the big play. Yeah. Um, so it was really exciting at halftime. It was 21 to 13, Dorman with the advantage. You know, and Burns did a great job there. Dorman was driving again late, and uh, Burns had the long turnover of the game, made a pick, I think, around the 18, 15 yard yeah, line yeah. there to keep Dorman out of the end zone there late in the first half, too. It was a big play for the Rebels to go into second half. And again, it was one it, score. It wasn't really a bad pass. It was good coverage. Yeah. It's yeah. the end of the half. Hey, you go for it. And uh, Kid at Burns made a good play. Mm -hmm. uh, then we get to the second half. And things changed a little bit. And I thought this was – we went to the Greenville game, um, Greenville-South Point game a few weeks ago, and we were a little miffed by some of the coaching decisions yes. and the scheme. Tonight, I thought both coaching staffs did an awesome job. Both of they them did. made adjustments they in did. the second half. Um, Dorman comes out. They get the opening kickoff. They go nowhere. And, and really, a majority of the third quarter, Dorman was not moving the ball. Uh, no, not, not getting no. the first downs, not moving the ball at all. Burns, they decide, you know what? Hey, we're going to stick to the run. The best player on our team is Rajay Harris, going to East Carolina next yep. year, I believe. Yep, he is. Um, we're going to give the ball to our best player, and we're going to make you stop him. Yep. And, you know, Burns put together a good drive. Going into the fourth quarter, they had made the game 21-20. to Dorman was doing nothing. And then the fourth quarter, Dorman adjusts. They say, you know what? We're not throwing the ball right now. Burns is getting a lot of pressure on us. We're going to run the Wildcat. Um, they went right down the field, scored, made it 28-20. Um, you know, great adjustment by their staff to switch it up a little bit, do a little something different. And that fourth quarter is when things really started to happen. Um, you know, it was 9.06 left in the game. Uh, Burns comes back down the field, scores a touchdown, make it 28-26. Mm -hmm. So, on a, a touchdown pass to a kind of converted QB to watch here, Bla Brady Blackman also took some yeah. snaps there. The guy was wide open. Uh, Scott yeah. hits him in stride. Yeah. Touchdown Rebels. Yeah, he caught it. I think they were, it was a 35-yard touchdown. I believe he caught about the 15, mm -hmm. and there was nobody around him. Um, so another good play call. Yep. Good job by the quarterback because I think he was looking far side of the field Came back and then the checked yeah. back near side of the field to find his open guy. Um, Two-point conversion. They roll the quarterback out far side, find an open man, hit him. Two points good. Flag yep. for holding brings it back to the 13-yard line. And then on the second attempt, Dorman gets great pressure uh, as quarterback is going back to throw the ball. They hit him, knock the ball out, and recover it. Yep. In high school football, they blow that dead. Um, Dorman would have taken it back. Yeah. All the way back. Yeah, they're housing that. I think they would have taken that back. But they, bl they blow it dead. Score stands 28-26 with nine minutes left. Mm -hmm. And then what was really the drive of the game for Dorman. <clears throat> they get yeah. first play from scrimmage. They go 51 yards on the run. Yep, Dura breaks a long run for them. Rashad Dura. Um, it's a big kid, by the way. He's one. a big kid. He, he can move. Yeah, he, he can he's move. big. And that was, that was, like you said, you know, they hadn't done a whole lot in the second half. For them to be able to break that big run right there when they needed it, that's that shows a lot yeah. about that team. Yeah, yeah, and you know the Burns crowd was in it. I mean, yep. they were they were very impressive. They were on their feet. They did their job, and that kind of that took a little bit of air out of them. Mm -hmm. So they drive it deep into Burns territory on that first play, and then it was third and six, I believe, about the 18 yard line for Dorman. They throw the ball incomplete. It's mm -hmm. fourth down. We're thinking, okay. Kick a field goal here. You go up 31-26. Yeah. Yep. You make you go off a you have a touchdown. Yeah, you make Burns score a touchdown. score a touchdown. This is with um, about seven and a half minutes left in the game. So that you know it's still halfway through the fourth quarter, but a two score lead with seven yeah. and a half minutes, pretty big deal. Yeah. They come out with the offense on fourth down and six, and they do. Uh, so they're on the far side of the field. So they do an end round to the receiver coming from far side near side comes around. And he gets about to the near side hash mark, and I'm thinking, I think he's got it. Yeah, he's he got a room for a first down. I think he can he for can sure. Score a touchdown. Yeah, he'll definitely get the first down. He rears back. I look. There's a guy wide open in the end yeah. zone. Hits him right in the bread like, basket. The guy could have fair caught him. There was he nobody around him. He, he could have. <laughs> it, incredible play call. Yeah, and Dave, great Dave job. Dave all hats off to that one. And great job, uh, number six, Lindsey. Yeah, Lindsey, Lindsey did, did a good job selling it because he. As soon as he got the end around, I mean, he probably went, 
I'd say 30 yards. Yeah, he sold it. He sold it. Yep. Running the ball. He never caught the ball back to throw. Yep. Never sold it to the defense until right at the last minute. Um, so good job by him. Mm -hmm. um, you can tell that these are very well coached teams. Yeah. By how disciplined they were. Um, yeah. And that you know put them up 35-26. Yep. Seven and a half minutes, and that really really put some pressure on Burns. Yeah. At that point. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they got a late touchdown, but just not enough time left. Could get yeah. the onside kick. And There's about two and a half minutes left. They get the touchdown. They make it 35-33, mm -hmm. which would be the final score. So they come out for the onside kick, and they're lined up far side of the field, kicking near side. And the ball, like a routine ground ball is what mm -hmm. it looked like. You know, it didn't get more than maybe a foot off the ground. And... It was about eight yards, um, so it was going to be short. You know, it doesn't matter what happened, but short. And then I'd say about ten yards, maybe from the sidelines, it takes an abrupt kick. Yeah. Downfield toward Dorman, and I don't know if it got ten yards or not, but it was very close. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of Burns, uh, a lot of red jerseys right there, and the Dorman player, again, very smart, very heads up. He immediately jumped on oh, yeah. it and covered it up. Um, good play by him to do that. Um, but as soon as that ball kicked, that kind of jumped up. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, there's a chance. So that was uh, almost an incredible onside kick. I've never, you know, they always say, a, you know, football never bounces the same way. Right, times yeah. Row. Oblong. <laughs> and that was a heck, I, I'm, I doubt he planned for that, but the way that that kicked, it was almost perfect. Um, mm -hmm. Just ran out a little bit of real estate there. But, um. Great game. It was. It I think was. both teams can walk away and be pretty proud. Um, only one turnover. Yeah, that was and that was at the end of the first yeah. half. Or Dorman was, you know, hey, we might as well force the issue here. Um, well played game. Not a ton of penalties. Um, there, were, there was a little bit of chippiness here and there. There was one mm -hmm. unsportsmanlike penalty. Yeah. But um, you'll have that in this game. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can see, like you said, both teams well coached. Like, not a lot of penalties. Not a ton of those. Like. That one turnover. Yes, you saw a few sacks from both quarterbacks here and there, a few of those, you know, but that wasn't. I think a terrible. lot of that was good defense. Yeah. You know, yeah. You, you see the score, you go 35 33, uh, the offense is running the show. Yeah, but defense has got a lot of pressure. Um, that third quarter was all the defense. Yep. yep. It was all defense. Got a couple stats here for you guys. Uh, leading passer for Dorman was quarterback Hayden Lee. Surprisingly, John, he was only 9 for 20 for 192 and two touchdowns. I'll tell you That's what, That's surprising. Though, That's... That kid threw the deep ball better than anybody I've seen in high school in, in quite a while. He was on the money with every one. Uh, his counterpart, Lawrence Scott for Burns, was 12 for 19 for 197 and three touchdowns. Good game for him as well. Rushing, Rashad Dura led Dorman, six carries, 75 yards and a touchdown. Rajay Harris, like we said, best player for Burns, 28 carries, 167 and a touchdown. And then receiving Javon Cohen. Went six catches, 122 and a touchdown for Dorman. And Chris Bird had six for 112 and a touchdown for the Rebels. So, great ball game tonight. Um, you know, John, one thing that you mentioned was a, was a couple big scores on long third downs. And to kind of hit that point again, we saw a touchdown for Dorman on third and 29, a touchdown for Burns on a third and 13, <laughs> and then a touchdown for Dorman on a fourth and six. So, <laughs> lots of big plays there when they had to have it uh, for both sides. Great football game. And, I'm not be surprised at all to see this game again for the upper state final. For sure. I mean, this is – I haven't seen uh, T.L. Hanna in person this year. Sounds like they may, may be a little bit down from what they usually have been in the past. Um, you know, I don't know how that, that Sumter region is going to work out as far as upper state, lower state this year. They may be the team that they would compete with these two. But I think these two teams are head and shoulders above anybody else in their region for sure. I think Gaffney's kind of a little farther behind them because of some injuries and things like that. But these teams would not be surprised at all to see them match up again. I guess over at Dorman probably for the upper state final. Yeah, being that they won this game. It, you know, you talk about Dorman scoring on that third and 29 play. Mm -hmm. You know, that was their, their, the Burns 45-yard line. And that was a play the quarterback scrambled out some pressure. And he mm -hmm. did a great job escaping some pressure, yeah. too. Scrambled out some pressure. And he threw the ball nearly 50 yards in the air in a yep. very, very good spiral um, on the money. Yeah, they kick and throw it. He can it was impressive, and, and you know, it was. There's a lot of guys out there, you know, have good arms, can throw a good looking ball, but both of these quarterbacks made really good decisions. Nine for twenty doesn't look great. Had one turnover, didn't hurt them. Yep. And the half had a couple nice runs as well. It's very, very good runs yeah. and, and smart runs. Yep. Smart runs. Um, I was very impressed. Yeah, so great ball game. Dorman wins 35-33 over at Nixon Field. I want to shout out. We've got uh, Ansel in here checking us out. Thanks, man. Uh, Corey's in here. 
Denise, we see you. Big win for uh, for Daniel tonight over uh, La Hala. Big win on the road for sure. D-Dub is in the house for sure. Um, what else we got? Uh, once again, like I said, we're live on Twitter. Hey, guys, and Facebook. Hey, y'all as well. So be sure to check us out there. Uh, one more thing. I'll check out, uh, thank you, Catawba Ridge Football for watching us on Twitter as well. Thank you guys for that. And you mentioned it earlier, uh, John. I want to give another shout-out to Zach Johnson and uh, the Burns Athletics guys over there. Those guys right. took great care of us. You know, I was on the phone with Zach earlier. He's like, dude, he's like, what do you want to do, man? I'm like, where do you want to be at? Like, wherever is it is convenient for you. He's like, well, how about we put you on top of the press box? Best view there is. I'm like, all right. So, John and I were on top of the press box watching the game tonight. Uh, it was really cool up there to do that. So, yeah, appreciate those guys uh, helping us out, telling us where to park, telling us, you know, where to come in, things like that, and, and making it as easy, easy as could uh, as he could for us to keep our stuff. And for the there. biggest game of the year for them, they could have easily said, hey, you know, Sorry, any man. other game, hey, we'll help you out, but tonight's going to be crazy. Yeah. You know, can't do it. And I would have been like, eh, yeah, Understandable. Yeah, we'll Understand. still come. We'll still come. It's not a big deal. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was awesome of those guys for sure. So, Big shout out to Zach and Burns over there. I also want to give a big shout out to one of our sponsors, the George Agency. Guys, open enrollment is here. If you need insurance, call these guys. You know, I think October 15th started the period, John. So if you are, you know, maybe a seasonal worker, maybe you work at a restaurant, maybe you, you know, work construction or you work, you know, something like that, you need insurance, call these guys. Call Richard and Bradley and the crew there at the George Agency. They can help you out. Or if maybe if you own a small business, you need, you know, insurance for your company, they can do that as well. So Health, life, they got you guys. Call Bradley and the gang there. Offices in Merle's Inlet and Mullins, they can do work across the state. They've got clients here in Seneca. They've got clients in Greer, clients in uh, you know the Aiken, Columbia area, clients obviously in Myrtle Beach and Merle's Inlet. So wherever you are, give those, give those guys a call. They'll be sure to take care of you. And also, shout out to Always on Top. they still got some shirts. we got some new stuff coming in for you guys. North Carolina fans, I know you want this to show off to your South Carolina fans that you guys are always on top. So. Big game tomorrow with Virginia Tech. That's right. Pick one up today. Tar Heel fans, always on top brand, always on top clothing on Facebook and Instagram. Be sure to check them out and support the guys that support us. Really appreciate it. And once again, thank you guys for tuning in tonight. I know that we've uh, we've kind of rambled a little bit here and there, but you know we had a lot of good stuff. There's a lot to talk about. Yeah. And this, I mean, this is the best time of year, John. It's, it's a little bit chillier, so it's starting to feel like real football weather. You know. It feels like not 90 degrees, like we're not going to sweat my, sweat my butt off going to the game. Yeah. So that's really cool. A lot of region matchups, like we said. A lot of There was a lot of really good games tonight. I mean, a lot Important of close games. games, too. Yeah. These games matter for region standings, for playoff seasons, things like that. Uh, I was listening to the end of the Spartanburg Mullen game on the way back, and the, the Spartanburg guy was like, yeah, he's like, really? Dad almost knocked us out of the playoffs already. He's like, you know, that, this was a huge game for us. So it's, uh, it, it's awesome to see that much stuff, like, you know, really happening now, I guess, with two more weeks in the season after this one. So it's really getting into the nitty gritty and, and we're excited to see how it goes. And you know, excited for you guys to tune in and watch us and, and see where we're going with this. So John, we'll give the update scores one more time. We'll run through some state scores and uh, go from there. That works for you? Yeah. Okay. Upstate scores. Dorman 35, Burns 33, Greenville 38, TR 31 in overtime. Daniel 41, Wahala 27, Boiling Springs 30, Hillcrest 20. Malden 35, Spartanburg 32 in overtime. Southside Christian 35, Blacksburg 0. Gaffney 57, Riverside 7. Greer 59, Berea 0. Woodruff 26, Emerald 0. Union County 56, Mid Carolina 21. Broome 14, Southside 13. Chesney 45, Carolina 14. Christchurch 17, Landrum 14. Pendleton 55, Crescent 0. Greenwood 24, Easley 13. Eastside 63, Blue Ridge 19. Lawrence 42, JL Man 14, St. Joe's 55, McCormick 20, BHP 49, Pickens 0, Seneca 62, Powdersville 34, TL Hannah 43, Wade Hampton 14, Liberty 45, West Oak 24, Westside 37, Woodmont 7, and Rim 52, Palmetto 0. John, give us some state scores, then we'll do our teams of the week. Too far to get your butt kicked, and let's keep rolling. All right, yeah, here's some. Uh... Some new scores, more uh, around the Midlands than uh, what we said earlier. So from Thursday night, Airport defeated Aiken 37 to 12, and then earlier this evening, AC Floor over Orangeburg Wilkinson 28 to 14. Brooklyn Casey shuts out Midland Valley 42 to zero. Camden they bounce back from their upset loss last week to Fairfield Central. They beat a very good Chester team who mm. knocked them out of the playoffs last year. Camden 28, Chester 7. Now, I did say I think where Chester's quarterback is out, I think I've seen for a couple weeks in the rest, and maybe that played a part of that. Um, but anyway, big win for the Bulldogs. Doesn't matter, yeah, who was playing. 
Big win, big win. Columbia over Hemingway, 25 to seven. Crestwood, 30. Dreer, 23. Dutch, four. Let the gas off, uh, let the foot off the gas a little bit maybe tonight. They win 43 to seven. Okay. Lexington. Okay. A little bit closer score than what we typically see. Still a big blowout for Silver Foxes. Gilbert, 30. Strom Thurmond, 26. Indian Land, 47. Keenan, 14. Lower Richland, an exciting matchup over Lakewood, 40 to 35. My Lugo Belgian Demons with a win that I never thought I would say happened. They knock off Irma. Oh. 17 to 14 LE. tonight. So um, they're putting 0 and 10 days behind them and they're beating guys like Irma. So nice to see the Demons get a big win tonight. Ridgeview, they continue their good season. They knock off Westwood 29 to 18. River Bluff doing the same. They beat Chapin tonight 45 28. South Point, we talked a little bit of trash about South Point a few weeks ago. I'll still say it. I'll stand behind it. Well, I will too, but this might change your mind a little bit. Richland Northeast is not a good team, but they beat Richland Northeast tonight 60 to 0. That's a good win. Big number. No matter, no matter, that's a good win no matter who you're playing right there. I'll give you that. Big number. Spring Valley over White Knoll, 36 29. Sumter continues a good season, and, and Sumter's a team that's kind of sneaking into things. Mm -hmm. we, we haven't really talked about the Gamecocks a whole lot this year. They kind of caught my eye last week when they blew out Blue Ball Belgian 58 to seven. Tonight they defeat Blythewood 28 to seven. So um, Sumter continue to to trend up here, and it'll be interesting to see what they can do in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Swansea over Pelion 34 to 15. And Union County knocks off Mid Carolina, fifty six to twenty one. Okay, I gotta ask John. Have you not said the big upset from them for the night yet? I was gonna wait. Okay. Well, one more score for you. Uh, North Augusta gets off the snide, thirty five twenty four over South Aiken. Big win for the Yellow Jackets there. Uh, also, I saw Marion defeated La Lake City. Lake City. Yes. Yes. Lake yes. City. yes. So I will wait on the other one. So, but John, who is your Team of the week. I got a feeling who it's going to be. So well, you say. <laughs> oh, are you going to take the team that we have? You can have it. You can have it. You can have it. I got another one. I, I want to do sure? it. Yeah. I don't really want to do them, but I'll, I'll do them. So go ahead. All right. Well, we'll lay it on you here. Um, tonight, something happened for the first time since 2009, and that was the Dillon Wildcats losing a region game. First time they've lost a region game since 2009. That's unbelievable. Thanks, Hunter Allen, for that fact there. Yes, shut up. They lose to Aner tonight. Blue Jackets. What was it, 38 to 30? 38 to 30. And this was a game we were following the score while we were uh, at Nixon Field. And it looked like Aner would, would take an eight-point lead. They were, they were up like eight to seven um, early on, mm -hmm. but then they would be up um, 30 to 22. Dylan mm -hmm. would tie it, get the two-point conversion. And then Aner... They would pull it out at the end, and Aner having a good year. They are top two they are. in three A. So um, Dylan's got a little bit of competition. They may not have to worry about Chapman. That's right. Or Chester or Camden they may not State get there. Championship. They may not get there. So um, yeah. awesome upset. Yeah. Big win. Aner thirty eight thirty over Dylan. Aner. Big win there for Aner. Um, you know, John, I've got a couple here that I could pick. One of them I could pick, like this team right here. I would. I really don't like their coach. I'm not going to pick them. Is that about that? Well, there you go. You know, there they're going to be marked You got to be likable. Yeah, yeah. It's a big upset for those guys. I don't want to say it because I want you to call me out. But <laughs> big upset for them. I'm not picking you. I don't like your coach. Sorry. So I got two options here. You know, I could obviously go with the end we were at. I mean, I know. I mean, Dorman beating Burns, that's a big game. That's when, a big win. That's, when a, you that's go, the deserving team of the week. In my I opinion. mean, however many people that were there, it was the entire town of yeah. Duncan and then yeah. some. And the fanfare they put. And the halftime show. The halftime show was awesome. Wait, I had a, a real life, real. Real size, a pinball, no machine. pinball machine going on. They had a guy in a pinball killed it. running around. I don't know how he saw anything, but he was killing it. Yes, yes. It was uh, quite odd there. Um, you know, I got a couple more good options. You know, like you said, I mean, Malden going on the road winning in overtime. That is very That's a big aggressive. win there, too. Uh, you know who I'm going to go with, John? I'm going to go with these guys because that other guy just said they haven't done us to help us out any on social media yet. So <laughs> I'm going to pick the Malden Mavericks team of the week. Big win for those guys going over to Spartanburg on the road, new stadium, winning in overtime. 
you know, I know they had a big lead. I think they were up 16 or 13 in the third or fourth quarter and kind of let all Spartanburg come That's back okay. and tie it up. That's okay. But they, they came back in overtime, and they won. I'm with the Malden Mavericks. You know, sometimes I let some other, you know, things jade my judgment. But these two, I don't <laughs> even care. I'm picking Malden Team of the Week. Go Mavs. And John has the Aner Blue Jackets. I've got to find me that Blue Jacket, Blue Jacket logo to put on there. Put on our uh, team of the week. Hey, if we can't find it, Zach probably has it. That's right. That's right. So, <laughs> yeah, be sure to tune in uh, on Monday to our Facebook and Twitter pages for our team of the week graphic. We'll put out a nice one there for uh, for Aner and for Malden. And that always is uh, sponsored by the George Agency. You know, those guys take care of us. They can they can ensure that your team can be the team of the week if you uh, if you take care of your guys. Health insurance, life insurance. Call the Georgia Agency if you're, a, if you're a seasonal worker, if you need it for yourself. Call them if you need it for your company. Call them. Bradley and the guys at the Georgia Agency can take care of you. Check them out on Facebook, the Georgia Agency on Facebook, thegeorgeagency.net online. So give them a ring. This is the time you've got to get that stuff done. I think it's like October 15th through, through December 1st, something like that. Yeah, so it's a tight window. You've got to get on that now. So call the guys at the Georgia Agency and let them take care of you. John, do you have your 242 Buck Kick team? You know, we've got a couple that are fighting for the. Oh, Fighting for the the crown here tonight, and I hate to do it. Uh oh. Um, I, I'm not gonna do it to Timmonsville. Oh, the whirlwinds. Because Lamar is pretty close to to Timmonsville. Yeah, that's not a far drive. That's not that's a far not, drive. That's not too far. Seventy nothing. I wouldn't go across the street and get beat seventy nothing. That's true. Yeah. But you know, I gotta give it to Silver Bluff. Aiken is not very close to Abbeville. That's true. It, that's it's, true. It's not too far. It's not terrible, not terrible. But when you're sort of bluff and you go up to Abbeville and you get beat by 41 and you're that proud of a program. Yeah, that's a tough one. It, you, you don't like that. That's that's like if you're Florida State and you come up to Clemson and you get blown out. <laughs> yeah, you hate to see that. Two years in a row. You hate to see that. That's the kind of thing, you, you, you know, that, that kills the program. That kills your, yep. kills your uh, income and them you have and the kind of excitement you have. So, sort of a bluff. It's been a long time since I saw you in Columbia playing for the championship. Tonight yes. you went too far. Yeah, so that uh John, do you want to look into maybe uh some games for next week or maybe the the rankings real quick kinda of go over that while I give a couple little random facts here. So I'm gonna go through a couple things that I've I heard or noticed, you know, earlier about these games. So like we said, Greenville comes back from fourteen down to beat T R. That game puts Greenville in the driver's seat with the east side for that region right now. So if T R had won that one I think everybody would have been tied. I think Eastside may have been a game up on them, but now I think it's Greenville and Eastside's to lose, really, it looks like. Like I said, Dorman really the lead there for the Burns and that over Burns in that region there. Um, and Southside Christian basically locked up their region tonight with a big win over Blacksburg. I think they've got one more regional game. I think even if they lose, I think it'll be obviously tiebreaker that over Blacksburg. That one's locked up. Uh, I'll tell you what, the. Woodmont, T.L., Hannah, Lawrence region got a little more interesting tonight with Woodmont going down to West Side. No kidding. Uh, I think Lawrence still has a probably a game edge in that one. I don't know if they played with Woodmont yet. I can't remember. I know they beat T.L. Hannah. So Woodmont or uh, Lawrence may be, may be really, really in the driver's seat there if they are to beat Woodmont as well. Um, who else? Let's see what we have. Hillcrest and Spartanburg, both in that region, may be the outside looking in, looks like. Uh, Boiling Springs has put together a couple of nice wins here lately that people didn't expect them to pull out, in all honesty. So, uh, Hillcrest and Spartanburg may be missing the playoffs along with Riverside out of that big region there. Let's see what else I've got. That's all the notes I have right now, John, I believe. Um, I think so, yeah. All right, so let's look ahead to next week here. Yeah, so um, some big matchups again. So... Maybe a little bit more of an interesting game after what we saw this week from Boiling Springs. They will go to the reservation next Friday and play Gaffney. Yep. So uh, five and three Gaffney, four yep. and four Boiling Springs. Yeah, I know. I know Gaffney's had a lot of injuries, but they still. I think they should beat Boiling Springs by twenty points. They should. Yeah. But I also didn't think they were going to get blown out by uh, by Burns either earlier. You this are year. correct. So Very correct there. Who knows what will happen there? Um, now this is kind of kind of quirky here. I went to the Greer East Side game last year, and East Side, good matchup between two top ten teams. Mm -hmm. Greer obviously um, eventually went to Columbia for the state championship. Next week, one and six Greer, or now two and six Greer. Right, right. Will host seven and one East Side. Um, Greer kind of beat up on them last year. We'll see if East Side can yeah. can return the favor. Yeah, and I know uh, Greenville will be pulling hard 
for Greer there because uh, they're tied 3-0, 3-0 with yeah. East Side in that region. Greenville will play Berea next Friday, so you, you count on Ber- uh, Greenville probably mm-hmm. getting a win next week. Yep. Uh, pretty big game in Chapman. They will uh, host a 4-2 and Southside team, so no cakewalk for Chapman next Friday. And this could be maybe the game of the week for the upper state. Mm-hmm. Lawrence, who has had a good year this year, they will have to host T.L. Hammond. Yeah. Uh, so two one-loss teams going at it. Huge for region play yes. there as well. So that will be a fun I, game to watch. Did Lawrence beat T.L. Hammond like a week ago? Or did Greenwood beat T.L. Hammond? It was Greenwood. Okay. Well, this is a big matchup. Um, then, Greenwood sure. being bad. Yeah. I tell you what, I wouldn't mind going to that, but who wants to go to Lawrence? You know, it's it's probably about as far away as Burns is um, for is us. It really? It's, it's about 30 minutes. We'll look into around. it. We'll look into it. We, we could try it. We could try it. Um, Greenwood head to Westside. Um, Westside showing some life after a big win tonight. And especially having to go to Westside. Mm-hmm. Um, a little bit of a trip there. Um, Southside Christian's going to play Georgia Horsch. Christian? That seems like an AFL team. I think that might be an arena team. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. They're yeah. three and three. I don't think that's the same division as what Southside Christian is. We'll see what kind of rules they play. Um, Burns, another pretty big game. Of, and maybe we're just biased. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, they play Hillcrest next Friday. I still like the Hillcrest defense. Yeah, the um, Scott Scott twins. Oh, the twins are brothers, Aries and Aces. Yeah. Great players. I mean, they just... And they, they, they lost tonight, offense. right? Yeah, 30 to yeah. 20 to Bowling Springs. Yeah, so... And, and maybe Bowling Springs is a little bit better than... The maybe. Game. You know, they got... Like, beat 50 to 50 nothing by Chapman or something like that, wasn't it? Oh, Chapman's good. That's true. <laughs> maybe You're Chapman, not wrong there. You're not maybe wrong. Chapman is that good. You're not wrong. Uh, Blacksburg, they'll try to bounce back next week as they host Landrum. Now, this will be an interesting game, too. Malden will get to host Dorman. Next week, there, there's no yeah. breaks in that region. No, you know what, you, you know, and John, and that's another team. You know, we saw them play early. We saw them play Greer. We saw them play Hillcrest. They won. They won one of those games. I, I don't see what it is in Malden, but they keep winning. I mean, like that. You know, like we saw. I was like, John, I was like, I don't know what's going on here, but they're winning again. They're playing again. So hats off to those guys defense. too. Yeah, they play pretty good defense, and they got the best kicker we've seen this year. That's true. Um, that's true. They, they play a good field position battle. That's true. A good field position game. And, you know, that's something that, that we tend to forget. Yep. Another big game. Wren is going to host Belton Honeypath. Belton Honeypath, the team that we haven't thought a whole lot about this yeah. year, but as they, they usually do, there. yeah. they're a one-loss team. Yep, Wren Hurricanes. They can put up some points for sure. Absolutely. So that'll be a good game to see as well. Um, Abbeville will host Saluda. So... It will be a good one. A little bit more of a test for Abby. And I think Saluda's only loss is to Southside Christian, if I remember correctly. I, that's, so not to that's the, not any slouch right. for sure. So. That sounds right. So uh, some pretty good games. Pretty yeah. good games uh, next week as well. So we'll have a lot to have a lot to look forward to next Friday. Awesome, awesome. Well, John, uh, I'm going to run for Bill Tech scores one more time, and then we'll get out of here if that works for you. Yeah. Okay. If you're watching yes. on Twitter, appreciate it. Moving the chains. If you're watching on Facebook, appreciate you too. Moving the chains. I mean, you guys can email us if you want to. If you guys went to a game, send us some pictures, send us some comments. I know we got some from Denise uh, of the Daniel game earlier. Got a couple things from uh, the new Spartanburg Stadium we'll post out as well. So thank you guys for keeping us up to date. You know, because obviously we can't go to every game. At the most, I can go to one or John can go to a separate one. That's it. There's two. We usually go to the same one, so we don't get to see everybody play every weekend. So if you if you have some good comments or thoughts or pictures or whatever, send them to us, and we'll get them posted up for sure. So appreciate you guys tuning in again tonight watching us all on both of our live streams and and I'll say this before I forget. Subscribe to our podcast. Apple, uh, Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you get them, just subscribe, rate us five stars, leave a review, we we'd appreciate it. We had a we had a, a viewer, sometimes pesky, now Brian Lucas requesting the uh, podcast. Audio only version, yeah. So if you guys want to do that request, now you have here we go, yeah, yeah. So just just tune in that way. You know, obviously, you can still watch us on Facebook if you want to. But this doesn't go away. It'll be on Facebook and YouTube forever, so you can check it out there or do the audio version. But whatever's better for you, feel free. All so, kinds of options. Anyway, update scores one more time. Game of the week, Dorman 35, Burns 33. Other game of the week, Greenville 38, TR 31 in overtime. Third and final game of the week, Daniel 41, Wahala 27. Boiling Springs 30, Hillcrest 20. Malden 35, Spartanburg 32 in overtime. Southside Christian 35, Blacksburg 0. Gaffney 57, Riverside 7, Greer 59, Berea 0, 
Woodruff 26, Emerald 0, Union County 56, Mid Carolina 21, Groom 14, Southside 13, Chesney 45, Carolina 14, Christchurch 17, Landry 14, Pendleton 55, Crescent 0, Greenwood 24, Easley 13, Eastside 63, Blue Ridge 19, Lawrence 42, Jail Man 14, St. Joe's 55, McCormick 20, BHP 49, Pickens 0, Seneca 62, Powderfield 34, TL Hannah 43, Whithampton 14, Liberty 45, West Oak 24, Westside 37, Woodmont 7, and Wren 52, Palmetto 0. Whew. A lot of good games, John. Shout out to our teams of the week. So. Malden for me, the Aner Blue Jackets for you, knocking off Dylan 38 to 30. Big win for, for Aner there tonight. Again, congrats to John's Lou Golf Elgin squad. Congrats to my PD Eagles. Congrats to North Augusta. Congrats to Marion. Just keep winning, guys. I love yeah. this. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> All the hometown guys just keep on putting it on. So I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in, listening to us for, for Ramble for a while here. And uh, once again, John Epps, Kevin Thomas here for Moving the Chains. I guess we'll see you guys uh, next week. See you then.